What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another, what I think is going to be riveting episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I am your host, Rex Ruger, along with the esteemed Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benji's back with another episode. Yes, and uh, really looking forward to this one, man, man. Got a legit heavyweight in the house tonight, man. Yep. It makes me feel good. As a couple of guys, both north of 200 pounds, man, it's nice to get a legit heavyweight in here, man. Makes me feel good about myself, that's for sure. I like that the heavyweights are... Uh... And this is a guy who was in against everybody, bro. You there? He's here. Yeah. Our guest is here right now, man. Let's get him in here, man. Uh, this is going to be a fun one, man. I can tell, man. Uh, this is a guy who I definitely want to give a lot of uh, emphasis on a lot of the great work that he does as well. Where is he? He's there. He's there. there. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, an honor to have uh, Monty Two Guns Barrett on here. And uh, one thing we were just talking about in our little preamble before you got on here, that, you know, despite all your boxing accolades and accomplishments, uh, I know the one thing you're most passionate about right now is your charities, man. So I like to kick off by really putting some shine on that stuff, man. So tell us about the great stuff you're doing uh, with the the, uh, the uh, kids and how you got uh, into this with uh, the great Zab Judah. New York's own Zab Judah. Yeah, yeah. Zab, Zab's like a brother to me. Me yeah. and my punk right now, we mad at each other. So you know how brothers are. So yeah. We, yeah. We're, we're figuring out. But well, I'm doing a yeah. podcast with my son. He's my son. So, you know, same yeah. dynamic, you know. Yeah, right. no. yeah, so Zab's like a little brother. I mean, his father and I were friends. Uh, and his father, we we had a, we, grant, we, grant, we we have a street bond. And he liked the way I move in the streets. He said, I want you to mentor my sons. And... So when I got in boxing, you know, I started Zab and all his brothers started spending the night at my house. You know, I'm six years, seven years older than him. Yeah. So, you know, he be, they became like little brother. But you know, we got a we got a House of Champions um nonprofit charity where we're in um South Carolina. We started in South Carolina and Boston. I'm in Boston now. I live in Boston and South Carolina. So it's a nonprofit. It's uh it's about helping these kids um um bring up their grades, you know, get back into something because it's not just boxing, it's education as well. My wife right. is a teacher at Harvard. She's a graduate from Harvard and she's a dean at MIT. So her and I came together and we developed a curriculum that we're selling in South Carolina. And once we do a whole school full year, then we're gonna, they're gonna license it through the whole South Carolina. So it's about, it's just about really about Helping kids get a have a support system. A lot of these kids' grades are failing. A lot of these kids are not doing that good in school. Right. In the street, they run into the streets and things like that. One thing boxing has taught me is that you know teamwork makes dream work. Absolutely. You, you and also you have um what what do you call you have when you have something to to, to, to strive for. You do better, you know. Yeah. And um, accomplish, and and then you know, once you win one fight, you want to win another fight, and then you feel accomplished. You feel like a part of something. Right. And that's what boxing is all for me. Even though I was, I, you know, I come from Southside, Jamaica, Queens. I was involved in sports all my life. When I got involved in boxing, it took me to a whole nother level. You know. Yeah. So boxing has got me in many rooms. And then my personality and my 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 um and my exposure keeps me there. So Boston has done so much for me. I traveled the world. I've been to 23 plus countries. I was able to experience all this. I worked in Russia for some months. I I was in I've been in from New Zealand to to London to Austria. I've been all over. But and this who would think that a kid from Southside Jamaica Queens in the projects would have done these things. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's how New Yorkers operate, man. We get shit done, man. We get shit yeah, done. Always, <laughs> always, yeah, always. Yeah. I, I don't care wherever we are. So I, I, I went and I found a house in South Carolina and um Columbia, and uh, I was out there. And the mayor for eleven years happened to be my childhood friend. I didn't know that when I moved out there. So he called me up and he was like, "Yo, bro, what's going on?" And he kind of extended his his hand and gave me the olive branch. 
He said, anything you need in my town, you got it. And he caught, he saw blessing me with the opportunities. Yeah. Now, why specifically, though, of all the charitable endeavors that are out there, and there's so many worthwhile charities, like, why are you so passionate specifically about helping kids, though? Like, where does this, like, uh, do, you know, are you in touch with, like, where this stems from? Like, why so passionate about this specific charity? For one, I got seven kids. I got yeah. six daughters and one son. For two, uh, I did a story in um, Deadspin. I was molested when I was five years old. Mm. So I was molested uh, from a family member. And, you know, then from that from that space, I grew up in a violent space. I yeah. grew up where there was a lot of violence. I'm talking about gunplay, violence in the streets, all type of things. And the reason I want to, and I've always had a dream when I was younger. I always used to say, when I get older, I'm going to help kids like, like myself. Like my grandparents took care of me every summer. And I got a chance to go to the Boys and Girls Club and join and be a part of something. Right. And that gave me that gave me value. So when I come back to New York, I have a different energy. Right. Yeah. But that didn't last for long because of so much violence in the 80s. You're, you're talking about crack era. You know, I was right. in the crack era. I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. I was exposed to things. But God had a, a special anointing over my life and he protected me from everything. Yeah. yeah so, I was actually curious, like. When I was reading about the um the charity work that you and Zab do, I was curious if he was kind of gearing it like a boys and girls club. Cause that's what like from what I read from it, that's what it kind of reminded me of was the boys and girls club. And I know how great that's been, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, for kids, especially who come from, you know, impoverished neighborhoods or yeah. when they don't got structure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you know, you only can go as far as your support system right yeah. so if you don't have no support system you can't go far so what we want to do is we want to give kids the support system we want to show them how to dream we want to show them how to believe in themselves and boxing has you know I, I played high school sports i played college sports and i was in football team all american and all that but boxing has taken me to a whole different level of obedience right you got to have a lot you live discipline and obedience you got to yeah. have that or you go nowhere yeah you know? And, and now um, where can and now what kind of a call to arms is this as far as like other people uh, stepping up and helping? Obviously, you and Zab are at the forefront of this, but uh, are other boxers or or are people in your field stepping forward? And uh, you as you did mention in one of the articles that you sent, I believe that you told me that uh, you were shooting for this February, having uh, 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 been able to amass a million dollars towards this. Yeah, well, um, well, Dell people from the IBF, Melvina Lathan, the, the former um, athletic commission, everybody's aware of it, and they're giving me support. They said, "Whatever you need, uh, let us know." So that's I have, I have, I have my community support. Junior Jones, uh, um, everybody, everybody I spoke to said, "You know, let me know if you need me. I'm here." So that's yeah. the good thing about one thing about the boxing, Layman Brewster. You know, what I'm saying. So certain people I have contact with, uh, relations with, they reached out for me. I heard what you're doing because we do box, US amateur boxing shows. I got yeah. one coming up this January, February, and when we do these shows, we like to bring other other fighters along just so that the kids can have an audience. You know. Yeah. So I mean, and it's it's sold. It's been pretty much sold out. Um, I'm um, at, uh, start next month. I, I should be getting um. Um, again, I should have around um, almost a million dollars in the next in the next few months, and I've been doing this for a year so far. That's great. That's so progress. As far as, far as far as fundraising, you know, as far yeah. as support. Yeah. Now, of course, we, we would be remiss, you know, if if you know, getting that right off, getting that out right off the rip was great, but we'd have to certainly ask you some stuff about boxing, uh, uh, the current heavyweight division. Uh, uh, Anybody there that stands out to you uh, uh, that's heir to the throne when when Tyson Fury is no longer? No, I mean to be honest with you, <laughs> you would think this, but a lot of fighters feel like this. I don't follow boxing as much as I used to. Really? Yeah, we have heard that a bunch of times. So, we have heard that boxing has taken so much of my life. Right? I even stopped watching football. I stopped watching basketball because it takes so much of your life, and then. It, you know, even though boxing have done so many great things for me, it also have taken a lot of uh, years out of me. You know, times I lost marriages, I didn't get a chance to spend with my kids. 
You know, I'm doing all of that now because I'm a young, I'm a young 52 year old. You know, yeah. I work out four times a week. I run 50 miles a month. I take care of myself, but I mean, Boston has taken a lot out of me. So if it, if you're not on the forefront and you're not the top five tier, I'm not really paying attention to you. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Get, you, you you work a craft your whole life. Eventually, yeah. you just, that craft is you just sick of it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, sometimes you want to step away from it, man. It, it has occupied uh, a lot of your life. Uh, uh, so first of all, you know, I have to throw this out here, and you know, because we always express our opinions on off the couch boxing. In my mind, you're two and zero against David Tua. There yeah, you go. I, I said know. it. I have yeah, to say yeah. it. Yeah, I know. David Tua just went to the Atlanta City. I was going to go to the Atlanta City uh, Hall of Fame, but I caught COVID, and I never had COVID before. So I like, dang. Yeah. So I had to, I called them and let them know I wasn't going to be able to make it. I wanted to be there for them. I mean, uh, David Tua is a good, a great guy. But you know what? When I first was over to fight uh, David Tua, and like in the in um early in the early two thousands, I said I would be David Tua with on any day of the week. Because his style was really good for me. He's aggressive. Yeah. He come one way. And I always do good against guys like that. Yeah. And I always thought I can always be David Tua. But it was, a, it was a great fight, especially later on in my career. Yeah. And you did hit him often and uh, hard. And it, 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 it was a joy to watch. You know, I, I personally wouldn't have scored that first fight a draw, though, man. I mean, but that's just me, though. You know, and, and, and it, it is tough. And we've talked about it on this show plenty about how infuriating the bad officiating really can be sometimes when you get a great fight and and, and you get a, a an outcome that's less than satisfying. Bad officiating, you know bad judging. But the yeah. good thing about it was it, it led up to a better fight. Yes. The most competitive fight. I mean, and I went to, you know, you got to go to go to another country and beat somebody. You you know what I'm saying? You got to knock him out to get a draw. Yeah. So I had to be that convincing to beat him in his own country. Yeah. Yeah, right? you do, you, yeah, you, you definitely came back very convincing in the second fight, I thought, for sure. Yeah. And he, and he broke my jaw in, in the last round. He broke my jaw. He knocked me out the ring, and I climbed in the ring. And uh, I just had to, I had to, I had like, it was the funny thing. The coincidence was, I dropped him in the last round. He dropped me in the last round. Yeah. I, but, I, you know, you know, David Tua is known for that. He's known for a big punch. And he, he's dangerous from round one to 12. Yeah. So I climbed in, and I, I was so ahead of the scorecards, you know, I, I wasn't going to be denied. And now, weren't you also mentioning something about a uh, 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 getting into the uh, endeavor of a boxing slash wellness type of uh, uh, facility? Is that what you were alluding to? Yes. So my wife and I, we and, and my family, we bought a we bought a building in South Carolina, and it's a it's a um it's going to be called House of Champions House of Champions Wellness and Fitness Center. It's all it's a 6,500 square feet, two floors. One floor is going to be for boxing. The other side is going to be for fitness and wellness for the boxing. I mean, for the community uh, of St. George in South Carolina. That's nice. That's nice. So yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, we're looking forward to it. We start, we start, uh, we start the construction in two more weeks, and uh, hopefully we have, we have everything done by uh, January. Okay. Is that gonna be okay. like is that gonna be like YMCA style, or is it gonna be like nonprofit? You know, what I mean, no. Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get like you go to a YMCA, you got to get like a uh, like a pass or whatever. Membership you know? or dues or. Yeah, it's gonna, have, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be for profit and nonprofit. The boxing is gonna be nonprofit, and the for profit is gonna be the wellness and fitness because everybody want to go in and get in shape and yeah. Yeah. like for the community, you know, older people and whatever. Yeah. So. You know. Yeah, people will buy those gym memberships up, man. They will. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Especially, definitely. especially around January first. Yeah. yeah that's, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. January yeah. 1st. You'll be looking for a lot of those customers you know, eating good you know, in the holidays. You know, much, yeah. you know how much money you're gonna make on folks that go yeah. and sign up for a year and go for a month and never show up again, but gotta pay you for yeah. a month. <laughs> right. Well, that's why we're looking for pre-sales and everything like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, this is a new business for me, but I'm excited about it. And yeah. I'm looking forward to changing people's lives and helping people. So is, that, now, something like that, you would, is that something that you yourself would like to like work on is like being like a fitness instructor, like helping them with fitness and boxing? Or is it just like boxing for you? Well, I, I do a little bit of everything. Like I said, I, I take care of myself. I run 50 miles a month. I work out four times a week. So I'm always helping, you know, uh, and and my, my forte is boxing. So, of course, 
um, I have a boxing program because we still need to make money. Even though we got a nonprofit for the kids, we still need to make money. So you put boxing programs in these gyms because people love to take the classes. Yeah. I'm really glad that I got to hear this interview tonight because this is exactly uh, uh, what I need because I've also been keeping up with Shannon Briggs' videos too. You guys are inspiring. I, I, I'm 50 years old. I'm a parent and a grandparent, and, and right. there shouldn't be any excuses though. 50 years old, I shouldn't be like uh, I shouldn't be, be letting myself go to hell. Can't no, do it. I'm 52. Look, bro, you know. You I know. You look great, 50. man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You know, and I, I'm saying to myself, I'm, I have these kids that's looking up to me and, you know, you know, the senator and the mayors and, and all these things. Now, you know, I got to I got to play the part. I got to look the part, not just physically, but mentally, spiritually and emotionally. I got a, a part to play if you're helping kids and you're right. and you're you know, you're you're the face of your brand. And now talk to me a little bit about your relationship with Zab and how he comes into the fold. Is, is this something you guys uh, 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 conjure up together or or, is, or did you start this and bring him into it? Yeah, I started it and I brought him into it. But also right now, um, me and Zab, we did a couple things together, considering like he's like a little brother. We did a, we had the BBG, the Bad VIP group. We had a concierge service, but then COVID happened. We were doing pretty well with that. But when COVID happened, everything shut down. Yeah. So, Right now, yeah, it was it was the idea when I went I moved to South Carolina and I seen the things that was going on. I saw a lot of violence in the, in, in the counties and then uh when Steve May, uh Steve Benjamin the mayor was like, you know, you should get something started here. When I got when I got involved with these programs and the workshops, I brought Zab along. Yeah. I'm glad to see Zab and I'm glad to see Zab involved. And I will throw out there, man, that uh uh you know well, I mean, we are in upstate New York, but still. New York is New York. You know that, man. We're yeah, claiming yeah. Zab Super Judah as ours, man, for sure, man. I mean, I, well, anytime I want to go back and watch old fights, I'll go back and watch Zab's fights, man. I mean, in my mind, man, Zab as a southpaw, just what he did, man, so so sometimes overlooked, man, but, I mean, phenomenal. A phenomenal talent. Right. One yeah, of the yeah, best. Yeah, Floyd down. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that would have been a great fight, man. Yeah, him, him and Floyd, if that would have been allowed to continue. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's uh, and then everything is about timing. You know, Floyd is great at what he does. You know, one thing you got you got to take the, the hat off to Floyd because he's one of the first boxers to get out with all his money and all his marbles. Yeah, yeah. Salute so, to him. I know. Right. So that's yeah. that's 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 within itself. Just that. Just think about the politics that every fighter has to deal with or go against. Right. And he he won so decisively that you never you never question the win. Right. And he is always fodder for when we go on to the boxing websites on, on Facebook. And I mean, he's such a polarizing figure. People either love him or hate him. He's just so, uh, you know, he, he garners so much attention. But what he's done business wise and boxing wise. I read uh, I read that a statement from him where he said that he bought himself out of his contract for seven hundred and fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Then in yeah. the next three fights, won seven hundred and fifty million. <laughs> yeah. Just so crazy, though, but what happened was. When Zab fought Casas Zoo, we was out there with Floyd because Zab and Floyd are really good friends. Yeah. And every night we used to play uh like a uh, full quarter basketball, you know, Floyd, Zab, we all playing. And it was like 20, 30 guys of we just talking junk and playing. And every night it'll be around three o'clock in the morning when we're finished. And every night I seen Floyd bring his sweatsuits and his uh, his bag, and he would get up and he would get on the treadmill after after um playing all that basketball and run three or four miles. Yeah. I thought that was incredible that he believed in himself and he was um he was he was a repetitious person. One thing about sports, it, te it teaches you about discipline, obedience, and re and being repetitious over and over. To you know, so for him to get up there after after th three full courts of basketball. Yeah, we're going three or four miles. That's yeah. crazy. I gotta say, I, I gotta say, that's it. That's I'm a I'm a I'm a basketball guy myself. I love I love playing hoop. That's a gym I would have loved to have found myself in. Yeah, <laughs> I know. that's a pick. That's a pickup game you like to stumble into. Now, who's got that? Now, now, obviously, we know all your boxing skills, but behind closed doors, when you guys are hooping, man, you know, uh, uh, uh who's got the skills on the court? I, I'm not a basketball player. I I like to punch. I feel like yeah. I feel like Zab Judah's got football. a good jumper for some reason. I feel like Zab would be nice on the on the yeah, court. Zab is decent. He's a, he's a decent basketball player. 
Uh, yeah. he got, he's gotten better, but he he's a good he's the better golfer than basketball player. He plays a lot of golf now. So. I love golf too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And now you're yeah. speaking Benji's well, language I'm a over big there. Golfer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 other than all the charitable endeavors, man, like how is life after boxing though uh, uh, treating you? Like you look like you've gotten out of the sport, and and obviously you look fantastic, man. Well, thank you. I mean, the 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 funny thing is that the first few years I struggled because you know I didn't do the right thing with all my money, you know, and um I put a couple of dollars away, but I had to wait for it to kick in. But yeah. you know, I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. I, my 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 lady at the time was uh, pregnant with my daughter, Gabrielle. She'll be nine next week, and I was like, man. So you know, it's been ten years uh, in April, next April since I've been uh, retired. So I was like, damn. I just didn't want to. I fought Louis T uh, the last, and I was like, I'm not gonna take no punches just to you know make a living. You know, yeah. my best days behind me. Let me just let it go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That was one of the hard things, one of the hardest things to do because I didn't really have no, I didn't have no, no, no B, no, no plan B. So yeah. now I'm trying to figure things out and life hits you. So I'm working this, I'm doing this, I'm hustling. But one good thing, I, I'm, I'm good at training people. So I started training a whole bunch of Wall Street guys and it's paying me like a month in advance, two weeks in advance. Yeah. And that worked out good for me, you know? I even started doing some Uber. I started doing a little bit, trying to figure out exactly what I was going to do. But then I got involved with the concierge service. I got a, a, a good friend of mine, Joe Murray. He was a lawyer, but he used to be a boxer. He was a cop as well. He he, uh, he supported me, and he helped me get uh, the, the Bear VIP group, and I was able to you know make start making a decent living again. Yeah, that's not you know really though what you the, the what, everything you just said just seems to me like the every man boxing story you know what i'm saying a lot of guys yeah. from boxing man that's just like they like they had your same story they just didn't sack nothing away and there's not really any aftercare for boxers you know what i'm saying yeah. and then you just fall on hard times yeah, yeah well me and eddie mustafa we tried to do uh a, a type of union for the for the fighters with jimmy hoffa jr but it didn't work out because you know you you need support from the fighters and we wasn't getting that much support so yeah. the little bit of money we raised we had to we donated to charities because you know you can do whatever you you we can do the most we can do as much as we can but if the fighters do not support what we're trying to do as far as give them some type of security or insurance it goes nowhere and yeah. one the the bad thing about boxing is that most people in boxing are they may have common sense but they're not that educated yeah so, right right so with education it goes so far you know what i'm saying but common sense you know common sense could, is going to keep you at a certain level but when you got education you can spread your wings and you can yeah. think out your box out your comfort zone yeah right? it is very it is very tough for boxers afterwards man <laughs> like we've had john scully on here uh ice man and uh you know yeah, he goes out and tries to collect memorabilia and get it signed and and and, and when he can raffle this stuff off he sends money out to fighters that are have just fallen on these hard times uh, uh, off the couch boxing. Uh, we mailed them off an autograph glove, you know, anything that you can do for fighters, you know, you know, post, you know, yeah. their boxing career is, is essential because it, it is a sport where you get brutalized for our entertainment. And then, you know, what's there, you know, where's your safety net at the end of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. John Scully's a good guy. Like for, for my, for my charitable event, Mike Tyson donated some boxing gloves for me. I still got the gloves. I'm gonna do an, um, a bl a blind um um which auction yeah to, uh, to give to sell the gloves to to raise money for the profit. I mean, raise money for the the the, the non the nonprofit. You know. Yeah, it's worthwhile. But, it's worthwhile if it's helping kids, man. Like these are gonna be the people that are gonna be taking the torch from us. You know. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree. You never. I feel like you know God has me has me on a mission. I feel like. Through this program that I'm doing, this workshop and this gym that I'm going to have, I feel like I'm going to touch some kids' life. It could be the next Barack Obama or the next, you know, whoever. But at the same time, I feel like I'm going to make a big difference on helping someone. Yeah. And I want to be yeah. in my, I want to be in my right um, mindset to be able to help other kids uh, and give them to give them the opportunity that I wasn't given. One thing, one thing I was gonna say before, and now I'm gonna say it now because we touching on it again with the nonprofit and stuff. You was daring to be great as a boxer, my, my guy, and you daring to be great as a after boxer. You know what I'm saying? With yeah, with I that. I, yeah. and you know but, what? And at the end of the day, I'm I'm serving I'm serving God. 
I'm, yeah. I'm doing I'm do, right now. I mean, I'm doing the Lord's work. So my intentions are all, all everything is behind me. Everything I got, I got, I got the, the powers behind me. I'm moving forward. God is opening up doors no man can shut, and He's shutting doors that no man can open. Yeah, There's a lot of things that are happening that divine intervention. I can't even explain it. But I'm not, I'm not just surviving after my life out the box, and I'm thriving, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in a good space, and I and I'm grateful for where I am. Yeah. I got it. Is good to see. I got to tell you, man, I understand exactly what you're saying, because us right here, we're nobodies, man. For you to get on and grace us with the interviews, that's all like open the doors. For us. But, but the doors. Listen, don't never, you, it's not your nobody. It's like, for me, like I said, I'm the type of person, I support everybody. So, I mean, that's who I am. So when you ask me for something, I'll reach back out for you when I was able to, you know, because um, and I'm going to support you because at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I'm paying it forward. Yeah. God is blessed yeah. Me. I can have a I can still talk yeah. after yeah. 18 right. plus years of getting punched in the face. I'm happy to have a conversation yeah. with anybody. And you know? so are we, which is why right at the top, man, you know, anytime anybody, you know, is this uh, vested and there's lots of people doing great charity work out there. But when it's so, uh, but you know, when, when it's so uh, uh, public knowledge, man, that all the great things that you're doing, man, that's why when we started out the interview, we want to take that right off the top yeah, man, and I put really the shine on that, you know? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Listen, I mean, you know, at this point, when I was, when I, when I was younger, I used to help people. I helped over 4,000 people in my neighborhood, my community get jobs, construction jobs. But that now I'm more intentional, right? When I, when I retired in 2014, I said, yo, my, this second half of my life is going to be better than the first half. Yeah. I just, I called it into existence. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And, and, you know, but at the same time, you know, I just see things like when I retired, 14 or uh, almost 10 years ago, every day I started dedicating myself to Christ. I pray and meditate and read the Bible at least two hours a day. Yeah. Right? Sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's every day. Like I'm invested into what my, my being. Like God, my Lord and Savior has He has given me light and He yeah. has given to me in abundance. Amen, and I owe him, I owe him everything, you know? Yeah. So that's inspirational that. too. I think that's a message people need to hear as well. You know, yeah, of course, of course, man. A lot of people, a lot of people are falling out of touch with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah they but, are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I think that's, I think that's pretty common. I think that's the everyman story, though, man. Like where, you know, I know through my life, you know, you go in pockets where you really feel like you're on fire and you're invested in your prayer life, and you know, not to go on a big slant about this or whatever, but you know, you know, you you do sometimes hope you catch yourself and reel yourself back in. And I will say right here on this podcast, man, that I have seen. Uh, uh, undeniable evidence of stuff come to fruition that I prayed about. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's real, it's real. And I mean, and, and it's all in the Bible. I mean, I mean, I like, I identify with King David so much. He went through so much. He was a good, he was a great guy, Yeah. but you know, he wrote the Psalms. I mean, most of the Psalms. And I mean, I mean, I read about this. Uh, I read the Psalms. One of my favorite, my favorite parts of the Bible. Yeah. Because it gets so deep. Like he, he's wedging it. He's fighting it. He's arguing with God. But God has David. He, even though he killed Bathsheba's husband, God said he's he's has he's a man after my own heart. Yeah. That's that's big. You yeah. after all you did, God still know you as a man as after his own heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Throughout the world, right? Yeah. So, I mean, my thing is like this. My thing is about, for me, like I said, being intentional about being uh, the person I am, God made me to be. I'm a loving person. I'm a caring person. You know what I'm saying? I get it in when I got to get it in, like with the boxing and things like that. But I, I'm, a, I'm a father. I'm a husband. You know, I'm a friend. And I'm a man. I'm a kingdom man. Yeah. I love Christ. Yeah. And and so uh, I got to ask and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I thought I read, you know, when I was trying to get some bullet points and stuff to talk to you about uh, that you are also a fan of pro wrestling. Well, me, me and John Cena are friends. So um, my son, I, I grew up in wrestling. All, all of us young men have when we yeah. were younger, right? <laughs> so then, and then my son found out that I knew John Cena. He was like, oh, my God, Dad, you know John Cena? Yeah. And then so I called John. John just was given us three tickets to go to all these different um, wrestling matches. So then my son said, Dad, I think you can be a wrestler. I said, you think so? I said, you think so? So I called John, and John paid for me to go to wrestling camp. 
for uh it was um it was um it was uh what's the guy uh dusty rose and yeah. uh and, and ricky steamboat they were the, the coaches and so you took a stab at it i took a stab but those guys kicked my ass so bad i said man those yeah. young kids are jumping up for cal how cal bonga dude yeah Woo. yeah you know, shout out to the pro head. wrestlers man shout out to the pro wrestlers because there's no off season for them and sadly enough man uh a lot of those guys die well before their time man for what they put yeah. their bodies through too um and listen all that stuff is real the physical part is real you know what i'm saying yeah. i had to wear a helmet to learn how to fall because yeah. I kept busting my head open. It was not yeah. well, a headgear, not a helmet, a headgear. You know, yeah. I mean, that physical part, that's a lot. And I'm, I was in my 40s, mind yeah. you, when I was trying to do this. <laughs> yeah, you don't so, bounce back. You don't bounce back the same way anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, I came back, I was sore for like two weeks, man. I was like, man, this is, I ain't doing this no more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, no, well, I got no, to ask you because Go I just ahead. saw one and I'm curious because you said you don't. You follow boxing, but only like the really big guys. You know what I'm saying? You don't know like the, the smaller guy, like the, you know, the incidental guys. I'm curious what you think about like these Logan Paul, Jake Paul spectacle fights. Like, what do you make of that? Do you like it? I don't, it doesn't bother me. It's entertainment. It's a form of entertainment. Like I watch wrestling. Like We're talking about it right wrestling. now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's entertainment. I'm not going to never knock nobody hustle. You know what I'm saying? And if they, if those two guys are helping people make, um profit and make more money than they've ever made before like in the ufc or boxing what's wrong with it yeah and the guy the guy take poker fight you're right i mean he not no floyd mayweather no zab judah but he can he can hold his own right yeah but if I he mean, wasn't sli but, but if he wasn't sliding you a big bag over to your side to take a dive and you were really straight up fighting him though i mean come on man tell us monty yeah. uh, two, well, you, I mean, come on. Stuff. you were you putting the two guns on him how long would he last I don't think he would last for too long. But no. the bottom line is you can see that it's something going on. But listen, yeah. these guys are like, listen, hey, I'm getting I'm getting half a million dollars. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, man. Yeah. yeah I do like that. Because when they're over when they're over in the UFC and Dana's freaking ripping their purse from them. Yeah. And they're they're, they're not making nothing over there. And then yeah, they that's why they want to come and that's why they want to yeah, that's why they want to come and make these blended, uh, these blended matches, man. Come over and make the money in like Conor McGregor, and now you're seeing uh, Ngannou you know, do it against Tyson you know, Fury. You notice they never do it in the UFC. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, but the point, yeah, because it's not money. It's not the same money. It's more money in boxing, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. So I mean, and more money, more boxing. money goes directly to the fighter. Well, I mean, I mean, of course that's the case. I mean, because Dana is running. It's not like it's it's, it's no competition for him because he's the only promoter. Right. You got like 10 promoters in the, uh, in boxing that really runs boxing. And yeah. then you got the networks, you know, like Al Heyman or Don King or Bob Arrick. You got all these promoters. You it's not Dana Hill. He's he's in competition with himself and his investors. Yeah. He has a board. You know what I'm saying? So he he calls all the shots and that's what you know, it's, it's different. And if you are an uh, individual like boxing is a very individual sport. You're going to make sure that as a promoter, you get all the money. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that, that the lead promoter for all these shows make the big, the bulk of the money. That's why Mayweather and Pacquiao never had to fight when they really wanted to have it. Right. They, they go for the, they, they want to be the top promoter because they, they control the show. Yeah. Now, I, I love your boxing no, style, no, man. While we're here, while we're yeah. here, before we get off this subject, I want to ask, because we got it coming up this Saturday. Tyson Fury and Ngannou. What do you think happens I like there? I don't know, but I like I like Tyson Fury, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit a uh, bias, you know. Yeah, I, we do I too. Tyson Fury, he can't punch a lick for a heavyweight, but I like his. He he brings so much personality. He's bringing something to boxing. What it need? Like he he's a big personality, and the guy yeah. can fight. I mean, he's not a big puncher, but he can fight, and he yeah. has a heart and. You know, what else do you ask for? I mean, heavyweights, you want to see guys get knocked out. I get it. He doesn't got that punch, but he he plays the part of a of a guy that knows his place in boxing. And he and I and I, I'm really impressed by him. Now, too, I love the way that you too fought. many getting up from that shot from Wilder. Yeah, that yeah, was amazing. That one he took late. Yeah, he rose yeah. up like the Undertaker. That was a wrestling moment right there, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was crazy. But, you know, yeah. You know, I, I was I was I was um I was in the negotiation of fighting Tyson Fury at one point too, it was, but then I went with the David Tour. Yeah. But you know, 
But uh, like I became a fan of his over, you know, just over over the years. You know, I yeah. respect him, and I like I like I like his whole get up. And he does sell fights. He does he does sell in hype fights. You know, he is ultimately good for boxing. I love the way that you fought your fights, though, man. I mean, you were like a tough out for for anybody, man. So yeah. so, but but who fought you the toughest, though? Obviously, we think of the David the, the two matches with David Tua, but that might not be the answer. Who who was your toughest fight? My toughest fight was, you're never going to think this, Eric Kirkland. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's usually a guy that nobody thinks of. All right, it so is. Eric Kirkland, the reason I say that, right, I mean, David Haig was initially my toughest fight, but the reason I said Eric Kirkland, because I was off, I didn't box for almost three years. Three years, I was in contract of uh, um, the dispute with Joe DeGuardia, right? So now, mind you, I came back and um, I'm fighting Eric Kirkland on ESPN main event and New Mexico, and the first time I didn't get punched in the face, you know, even though sparring, but now I get punched in the face, the first round, I was looking for somewhere to lay down. I was like, I ain't doing this shit no more. <laughs> I was like, yo. I was like, I was trying to just, from the first round, first time he hit me, he bust my whole face open. It was cut all in here, in and out. I was like, I ain't signed up for this, bro. So I'm trying to lay down, but he beat me from post to post. Like for the whole round, I got so mad I wound up knocking him out. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the last round, but what I'm trying to say, I was looking for somewhere to make a dramatic lay down. Like I was waiting for him to hit me, and I was all oh, fall out yeah. and fall over. Sell it for him, <laughs> right? But he kept beating me up all the way through the fight, and he was talking junk about me. He got me in the Joe Messi fight because he was gonna he was signed to fight Joe Messi next. Yeah, we miss so, Joe Messi. We miss Joe Messi. Yeah, Joe Messi was a good guy. He was a good guy. I, I the know New Yorker. Him. Yeah, he was a good guy. He was a good yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so if people want to get involved with this charity, man, you know, maybe give a shout out to how, how people can find you, where they can find you, you know, if they want to do anything or know more. Yeah, so basically we have a we have a website. It's uh, housesofchampions.com, houses with an S, housesofchampions.com. And um, you know, you can find us on, on Instagram, Facebook, on Houses of Champions uh, SC. And um, you know, uh, basically, like I said, um, you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot about us. We're gonna be very visible. We're, and we're right now, like I said, I'm going down there in two more weeks to start building out the the building I bought to make the gym. So we're gonna have a lot of material out there, and uh, we're doing pre memberships and everything like that. So uh, HousesofChampions.com is the website site. Houses and will you drop by? Seven. And will you drop by and see us here, man? We are right in the backyard oh, yeah, sure. of the International Boxing Hall of Fame, man. Come up on the, on the weekend, man. People would, I, you know, you're just such a gracious guy, man. People would gravitate and probably be overjoyed to see you. You know, I, I trained, I trained at Kahurston next to, uh, um, right, right over there. What's the uh, next to uh, Ellenville over there? Um, with Stan Hoffman. You ever heard of the the, the training camp out there? It's Where is it? Woodstock. Upstate New York. Yes, it's it's, uh, it's called. It's a small town. It only got one traffic light. It's called Cahurston. It's right next to Woodstock. Okay, it's a great place. I, I mean, see, we're I, even more upstate than that, man. Like we're like right in the backyard yeah. of the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, I know where you are. I know yeah. you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. We I went out there for I went out there with Dab for the, the his last fight. I was commentating that fight. Oh, okay. and I also okay. fought, I fought Tim Witherspoon when uh, Layla Ali and um, Joe Frazier go to sport. Jackie yeah. Frazier. Now, Tim, in, Withers, now, now, uh, Tim Witherspoon, man, was that another wobbly split decision, if I remember right? Yeah, no, that, that was, that, you know, that's my guy, though. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't want to make you have to say it, man, so I'll say it for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, Tim is a good guy, man. These guys are good guys, man, so, you know. I get how it is. Man, so who was your wrestling guy growing up, though, man? Like, who was that one guy that you rooted for? Because, I, I mean, I, I was a huge mark for uh, 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 Macho Man and uh, The Ultimate Warrior. Well, I, I, before that, I'm 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 a I'm super fly, you know, yeah. and Bob Backlin. Yeah, you know, Snuka. Bob Backlin yeah. put you in the chicken wing, boy. Bob Backlin come over there, boy. Woo! Done. That country white boy was he was <laughs> no joke. <laughs> yeah, I, Bob Backlund, I personally guy. grew up in the Stone Cold era. Yeah, he's oh, a Stone Cold just, era guy. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Which was not yeah. a bad era either, man. A lot of good characters. It wasn't bad. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't bad. But you know, Mr. Fuji, uh, you know, I mean. When I was when when I was in the eighties watching, you know, Don Morocco and the Fuji's yeah. and uh, the Samoan brothers, the Samoan brothers, they are David Tua's uncles. Yeah. 
You know oh, okay. Saying? Yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. 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 They, they That's a crazy awesome. connection right yeah. there, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah Listen, yeah. man. I mean, we totally salute, man, uh, all the charitable endeavors, man. Uh, I'm so glad you got a chance to get on here, man, and for us to be able to put this up on our platform and put some shine on this, man. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully people see it, embrace it, you know, uh, uh, jump on board, man. Yeah, we appreciate you doing it, man. Uh, hopefully we can get Zab on here one of these days, man. That'd be an honor, man. We'd love to hear his side of it too, man. All right, all right, good. Well, he's doing a lot of things. He got, he got his, um, he got his, uh, his, um, what do you call it? his celebrity boxing that he's doing? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love the thing he does online too, man. With the all callouts are mandatory. That's cool stuff, man. Oh yeah, yeah, that's still yeah, yeah that's with still flats. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, All right, well I mean, it's been an honor, man. We really appreciate you doing this, man. You know, I mean, for guys like us, man, it's a really big deal. Yeah. Um, man, listen, thank you, man. I humbly say thank you, and I appreciate it. And uh, we are staying in contact. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, perfect. yeah. Please do that, man. We would love to have you on again from time to time, man. It'd be an honor, man, to call you a friend of the show, man, for sure. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. you. Appreciate you, Monty Barrett. Thank you so much for doing this, man. All right, brother. Care, brother. Take care. All, right. All right, brother. later, man. We appreciate you. Thank right, you. you well, damn, man. I got to say, man, just like I told people at the beginning, man, that this was going to be a good one. And I did not lie. Probably delivered, man, like uh, uh, I would say right there, man, an epic, historic, whatever else you want to call it, man. Uh, uh, absolutely uh, enlightening. I will even throw enlightening in there as another adjective. Enlightening, uplifting, inspiring on a lot of levels. Yep, he was he was candid with open with us. He talked about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I respect I respect the hell out of that guy. Come on, man, that's the way you do a podcast interview, right there, man. And of course, you know, in in true off the couch boxing fashion, man. Uh, uh, well, first of all, man, let's definitely give a shout out to fellow upstate New Yorker uh, Zab Judah, who is the other half of Monty Barrett's uh, phenomenal House of Champions uh, charity and. Uh, you know, that's great, man. I Just like I said, man, fucking, you know, if a New Yorker's involved, shit's getting done. Shit's getting done, man. It is, man. We know because we're New Yorkers. Right. We don't give a shit if anybody's fucking watching right now, man. We're New Yorkers. We're going to do shit and get it done regardless. Uh, and, I, and I'll tell you what, man. I wasn't fronting right there, man. When I go back, man, because I'm such a boxing uh, 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 a junkie, man. That, like, if boxing's not on, and it's not on, like, all through the week necessarily, but thank God for the YouTube gods. Because you can go on there and just watch old fights, and I go back and watch Zab a lot, man. Zab could fucking really fucking throw it on, man, man. And and for a southpaw, too, man, I mean, I mean, shout out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, this episode also brought to you by, uh, yeah, maybe I'll take a couple of pulls, and, and we'll see here. And, and and you're smoking, man. We'll ramble a little more, man. No, nah, no, nah, I, was, I was saying, like, I'm an, I'm gonna quote our great American poet Gary Busey. Oh, we're gonna chop it off right here, man. Yeah. Chop off the head. Well, hold on, hold on. Before you do that, man. Be, before you do that, man. Let's uh, obviously encapsulate, wrap up the whole thing, man. Uh, big shout out and thank you to Monty Two Guns Barrett. Uh, you know, guy won 35 pro fights, man. 20 knockouts, man, and was in there, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to give him some his him some shine because I feel like. Uh, excuse me for that, uh, that we didn't get down to the brass tacks, but he fought Luis, uh, uh, Luis Ortiz. David Tua beat him. Well, yeah, he laughed about the part where I said that he was 2-0 and against David Tua because, in my opinion, the first fight was a draw. But uh, uh, Monty won it for sure. And then he came back. It must have been satisfying. He did come back with a unanimous decision. Fought David Hay, Hasim Rahman, Tim Witherspoon, Vladimir Klitschko, so the guy was in there with uh, uh, a lot of the great heavyweights of his era, man. And, uh, you know, of course, what else needs to be said? You know, he said he was from Southside Jamaica, Queens, New York. Again. Right. Give to the world. You're welcome. You're welcome, rest of the world. Yeah. New York just giving you some more genius and some more fucking greatness. <laughs> Go ahead and take a uh, go ahead and take it if you will, man. But now he's doing, now he's doing great shit, man. Uh, with, 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 with helping out kids, man, uh, uh, with Zab Judah, man, two New Yorkers out there fucking getting it done. No, February will have a million dollars. No problem. Right. New Yorkers will get it done, man. And, and, and that's just how they roll, man. And hopefully shout out to Zab Judah. If he gets to see this and I hope that he will, man, uh, you know, being that he's, uh, you know, even Monty said it himself, you know, like his little brother. Right. So, I mean, 
You know, shout out, man, Zab. We'd love it. Dude, all, all praise be to fucking Zab if he came on, man, because I, I love how he got busy, man. Yeah, I really thought that, man, throughout Floyd's career, man, that would have been the one guy, man, that, like, I think, like, uh, really. Dude, he really knocked really him good. down, but they didn't score at a knockdown. But Floyd's right glove touched the canvas. I so just touched, thought Zab would be that dude. Scored a knockdown. Yeah. I mean, you know, we bought a lot of Floyd. Uh, uh, we obviously bought a lot of Floyd pay-per-views, man, in anticipation of 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 seeing Floyd lose. Ah, ha ha ha! Joke was on us. Yeah, now, dude, Floyd was dude. Nobody knocked Floyd down, dude. Zab, the only one. <laughs> well, Shane was about to put him down, man, but it wobbled you know, him, but didn't know. Yeah, Zab, he held on for dear life. Scored a knockdown again. If Shane wasn't there to grab, though, man, I think he might have went down. Yes, I I yeah. can agree there, but. But I'm just not even talking about the knockdown, though, man, of Zab. I, I, I mean, I just mean as a southpaw, just Z, uh, everything that Zab does well and just his whole skill set and his whole approach to boxing, dude. I see him as, like, if I could create a guy that's the same uh, size as Floyd and put him in there, you know, from that era, man, I feel like, you know, real talk, man, we bought a lot of those pay-per-views, man, and everybody from Ricky Hatton to Oscar to Victor Ortiz to every one of the ones, uh, every, all the aforementioned names, it seems like we were always buying and tuning in, man. But, I mean, you know, really legitimately, the only one in my heart of hearts I ever felt like could have got it done would have been uh, 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 Zab. It's all right, though, because, dude, Zab, like, the way that fight ended with him and Floyd is what it is, dude, because he knew he was about to get hosed in that fight, dude. He should have got scored a knockdown. He didn't. He knew he was yeah. about to get hosed. Like, I would yeah. be mad, too. And then, obviously, the whole thing fucking jumped off with the whole, uh, you know. I'd be mad, too. I'd be mad, too. He knew he was about to get hosed, dude. Yeah. And I guess around that time, man, I mean, it was just one of those things where, like, it could have been, like, the political fucking game or whatever, man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, because they tried to pull some slick shit on Zab before, man, and I was glad that he called him out on it, man. If you go on YouTube, man, like, there's a piece on there where Zab really stands up for himself, man, because they're doing press conferences in his city, fucking, by the way. He's a Brooklynite. You know what I mean? They're doing, and, and, and Golden Boy, uh, you know, Oscar and Bernard got tried some snaky shit where, where like, you know, when Zab took, this, took the podium, he said, and I can send it to you afterwards, he, he, he took the stage and said, man, you guys have had me locked out in the basement, man, for the last hour or two, man. No one's telling them nothing, man. Because apparently, man, you know, it was getting testy between his camp and I think Danny Garcia was, it was leading up to that fight. And uh, he was acting like, man, because the Garcias were, like, uh, like worried about, like, uh, you know, something jumping off, man, that, you know, suddenly Zab and his entourage and his his, his whole deal is getting tr treated funny, you know? Yeah, I don't like that. I mean, he even said it, man. Like, why? Because they're, like, insecure and, like, I mean, you yeah, know, I was you, glad he said something figure, about it. You would figure probably at that time in Danny Garcia's career, I'm picturing him being younger at that point, Zab was probably the A-side. Well, and I also think, you know – like per their usual, though, man, I also think that like Danny's father was, I think, stirring the pot a little bit too, you know. So I mean, right. But we're definitely getting long winded here, man. I got to quote our great American poet Gary Busey by saying that I can go fifteen seconds with anything. Yeah, and I am going to end this, man, and thank Monty Two Guns Barrett one more time. And I am going to end this by reminding people, and I think that I think Monty Barrett will like this, man, uh, especially given the fact that his charity is called House of Champions. I will remind people that. If you want to be a champion, then you need to roll with the champs. And that's.